Hello, and welcome to this video on getting started with XMS Cloud. In this short video, I will show you how easy it is to use XMS Cloud to configure, provision, manage, monitor, troubleshoot, and report on your Wi-Fi network. And you'll do all of this from a single console. In this instructional video, I will show you how to configure your wireless network by creating and configuring a network profile with two SSIDs, two different EasyPass access portals, and an application control rule. I'll add a new access point and configure the software-defined radios. I'll show you how to add your floor plan into XMS Cloud so that you can quickly locate and monitor your access points and clients. And once the network is up and running, I'll show you how to monitor and troubleshoot your access points and clients using the customizable knock styled dashboard. Then I'll show you how to create customized reports. If you want to use this video as a reference, I've provided the times to the sections of this video so that you can skip around to sections you would like to review. To log in to XMS Cloud, Open your web browser and go to login.zeris.com. Enter the login credentials that were supplied to you in the welcome email. Once you've logged in, notice the sections available to you at the top of the web page. There is a My Network page, which is your NOC styled dashboard. And the Profile section is where you will create and manage network templates. EasyPass is a suite of eight different access services. And of course, there is a reports area where you can create customized reports on data going back up to one year ago. I will go into each of these sections in more detail as I go through this tutorial. One very nice thing about Xeris products is their zero-touch provisioning capability. What this means is that using XMS Cloud, you will be able to configure the network before your access points even show up to your facility. Once you place an order for Xeris products, you will receive an email with login credentials to XMS Cloud. You can log in and create and configure your network profiles with SSIDs, VLANs, policies, and much more. Once the access points show up and they're plugged into the network, they will automatically reach out to our activation servers in the cloud and will be activated. If a newer software release is available, it will automatically be downloaded and installed. If the access point has already been placed in a network profile, the profile will be pushed to that access point. This makes it very quick and easy to add access points to your network, regardless of whether the access point is in your building or at a remote location anywhere in the world that has an internet connection. The first step in managing your Xeris Wi-Fi network is to configure the access points. We make this easy by creating and configuring network profiles. A network profile is a template that is pushed to all the access points that are a member of the profile. When you add a new access point to the profile, the access point takes on the configuration of the profile. Make a change to the profile, and that change is propagated to all the access points that are a member of that profile. To get started, go to Profiles, and Profiles, and then click New Profile. Give your profile a name, and click the Create New Profile button. Now I'll create two SSIDs, a Guest SSID and a Corporate SSID, each with a VLAN and each with Open Authentication. Later in this tutorial, I will create and assign EasyPass access portals, which will apply security to these SSIDs. The first SSID will be called Acme Guest. Again, it will have open authentication. In order to assign VLANs, I need to enable VLANs. Now I can click Edit VLANs and assign VLAN 100 to this guest SSID. Now I'll create the second SSID, 
and this will be called Acme Corp. With VLAN 110, and again with open authentication. If I wanted to apply authentication, such as a pre-shared key or using my corporate radius server, I just select WPA2802.1x. Then I can assign a pre-shared key or enter the IP address and the shared secret of my radius server. But again, later in this tutorial, I am going to create a Microsoft Azure Access Portal that will leverage the Microsoft Azure Portal authentication engine for this SSID. When configuring the profile, there are a lot more configuration options available to you, including the ability to manage applications based on the SSID the end user is connected to, or by an Active Directory user group, or even based on the type of device the client is using to access your network. We also allow you to manage Apple Bonjour protocol traffic, and you can optimize the end user experience by using the advanced configuration options for the client, the access point radios, and multicast traffic. I will save this profile and now add access points to it. I can either add access points from the access points tab in the profile or I can go back to my network and then click on the access points tab. If I purchased a new access point and it is not yet available in XMS Cloud, I will need to add the access point to my XMS Cloud account. To do this, I will click the Add Remove tile on the Access Points tab. I first want to make sure that I have an open license slot available. If not, then I will need to either remove an existing access point to open a slot or contact my Cambium sales rep and purchase an additional license slot. In this case, I have an available open license slot, so I can add an access point to my XMS Cloud account. So I click the Add AP to Account button, then I enter the serial number of the new access point, and optionally, I can also enter a host name and the location of the access point. Then click the Add to Account button and this will add the access point to your XMS account. You can see here that my new access point has not yet been activated. After I plug the new access point into the network, it will automatically reach out to our activation servers in the cloud, and the system will do the rest of the work. The activation is done automatically. And if you already have these access points in a profile, they will get the configuration of that profile. After plugging the access points into the network, I just give them a couple of minutes and they will show up as activated and ready to go. And as you can see, my new access point is activated and it has its new configuration. Now I will optimize the RF channels and power levels of the radios. To optimize the radios, I will select them, click optimize, and then select the power and the band and click the Optimize button. Now the APs will analyze the RF environment around it and make the decisions on which channel and power levels to use. If I needed to change or customize the radio settings, which would include the bands 2.4 or 5 gigahertz, also channels, bonding, and power levels, I can use the Configuration Flyout window I access this window by selecting the access point and then clicking the View Edit Access Point Details button. On the flyout window, I click the Radios button, and now I can change a 2.4 GHz radio to a 5 GHz radio with just a couple clicks of the mouse. And just like that, we've doubled the 5 GHz bandwidth on this access point. Now that we've configured the access point, the next step is to set up the access portals. As I mentioned earlier, EasyPass is a suite of eight different client access services. It works with all devices, regardless of manufacturer or operating system, without the need for dissolvable agents. Create portals to quickly, easily, and securely onboard clients to your network. 
you have the option of three different types of guest access portals. There are voucher and onboarding portals, and we have Microsoft Azure and Google login portals. There is even a portal that allows a guest to create their own private secure network. Here are some of the more popular and obvious use cases for EasyPass. We have seen customers get very creative and use these portals in very unique applications. I will quickly create a couple of portals to show you how easy this is. The first will be a self-registration portal. With the self-registration portal, a guest will fill out and submit an online form, and then XMS Cloud will send the guest their login credentials. To create the guest portal, click the self-registration button and give the portal a name. Then click the Create button. On the General Configuration page, you can set settings such as the session expiration period. How long will the guest be able to access the Wi-Fi network? On the Look and Feel page, you can put in the company name, insert the company logo, insert a background image, and you can have the guest use their Google or Facebook accounts for the login process. And this is a quick view of the different forms that will be presented to the end user as they go through the registration process. This is the welcome page. Notice how the end user can use their Facebook or Google accounts to log in. This is the login page where end users will use their email address to log in. And this is the registration page where the guests will provide their name, email address, and mobile phone number. This is the email the guests will receive once they successfully register. And this is the page that's returned to the guest after they have successfully logged in. Now that we have the access portal created, we need to assign this to an SSID. So I click the SSIDs tile, assign SSIDs, and then select the guest SSID, and then save this access portal. The next portal I'll create will be a Microsoft Azure login portal. The Microsoft portal is very easy to configure and use. The portal provides a single sign-on for access to the Wi-Fi network Microsoft Office 365, and Domain Resources. The end user simply provides their Microsoft credentials. There is no need for a separate username and password. Also, there is no local authentication IT infrastructure required. This means no RADIUS server for you to maintain. The IT department can use the same domain management tools they are already using to manage access to the Azure environment. To get started with the EasyPass Microsoft Login Service, click Access Services and New Portal, then select the Microsoft Azure Access Service Portal button, and give the portal a name, and click the Create button. The first step in creating this portal is to have your Microsoft Administrator authorize the use of this portal with the domain. So just click Authorize. Have the administrator click this Have Admin Account link and then enter their domain credentials. Now you can go to the Look and Feel page, insert the company name, and insert the logo. Notice that there are no registration pages. The end user does not have to register. This is simply a pass-through portal where the end user will use their Microsoft credentials to log into the network. Now I need to assign this portal to an SSID. I'll select the corporate SSID and then save this portal. Okay, I have now completed a basic configuration of my Wi-Fi network and clients can now connect to it using either the guest access portal or the Microsoft login portal. Now I'll shift my focus on showing you how to set up XMS Cloud to monitor your network.
I'll start with maps and floor plans. In the map section, you will upload the floor plans of your facilities, place your access points in the appropriate locations, and then place the floor plan on a geographical map. Now when you come to the map section, you can zoom in to quickly review the status of your access points. You can even quickly toggle between the map view and a satellite view. If all of your access points are online, you will see this green bar wrapped around the floor plan position marker. If any of the access points are offline, you will get a yellow bar or a red bar if all of the access points are offline. Then you can hover your mouse over the position marker for further information. Click the View Building link to go to the floor plan. You will see the access points you've already placed on the floor plan. Hover your mouse over an access point to get more information about that access point. Click on the Heat Maps button to get a heat map of the RF environment. And you can click on the Show Clients button to have the client locations displayed on the map. You can click on a client to get more information about that client. And you can click on the Rogues button to locate the rogue devices in your general vicinity. You can click on a rogue device to get more information about that device. Okay, now that the access points are online and configured using a network profile, it's time to monitor the network. So let's look at the dashboard. The dashboard is a set of customizable widgets reporting on different aspects of your network. You can create your own dashboard. Give your dashboard a name. You can add and remove widgets to your dashboard. And you can customize the look of the widgets. You can move widgets around. The widgets show you information on your access points, client devices, and applications. This information can be very useful as you manage your network. For instance, notice that I have YouTube traffic on my network. But what if I want to make sure that my guests are not hogging my bandwidth by streaming high-def YouTube videos? If I'm in a corporate environment, this may not be such a good thing. So I can go back to my profile and go to the Policies tile. Then I can set a rule that blocks YouTube traffic on my guest network. So first I'll create an SSID policy on my guest network. Then I will add a rule that blocks YouTube traffic. And as quickly as that, I've just now blocked all YouTube traffic on my guest network. But what if I wanted to allow YouTube traffic during off hours? I can schedule this rule to be active only Monday through Friday between 8 and 5. And now, between the hours of 8 and 5, YouTube traffic will be blocked on my guest network. I can organize my access points into access point groups, which will help me focus on just a certain subset of access points. So to do that, I go to the Access Points tab, click Groups, New Group, give the group a name, and then add the appropriate access points to this group. There are a lot of other troubleshooting tools included with XMS Cloud. For instance, what happens if you have a client device that appears to be having a problem on the network? Well, to research this, you can go to the Clients tab and search for the client that's having a problem. And then once you've located the client, you get some good information on this client's page. You can also click the client host name a flyout window pops out and shows you the health score for this client. The health score is the accumulation of several performance metrics, 
such as the RSSI level, signal-to-noise ratios, packet error, packet retry rates, connection rates, and so on. The graph shows you the health score at that point in time for this client. You can also go to the View Details button to get more precise information about that client. And once again, you can hover your mouse over a certain point in time to get more specific information about that metric at that particular time. If you scroll to the bottom of the page, you can see the top application usage for this client. And if you have a problem with a client that is abusing the network and you need to revoke their access, just select the client and click the block button. A very important feature of any management system is the capability to run reports. With XMS Cloud, you can quickly create and run or schedule reports to run on a regular basis. You can even have the report automatically emailed after it has been run. You can customize the date range for your reports. And remember, XMS Cloud is the only management system that allows you to report on things that happened on your network up to one year ago. To create reports, go to the Reports section and then click New Report. Give the report a name and then click the Add Page button. Select the type of report you want to run. In this case, I'm going to run a Top Applications by Usage report. And for the time range, I'll give it the last seven days. I also have the capability of drilling down into the data. Do I want to include that? I'll say yes. Now I save this report. Now if I wanted to change the reporting history time frame, I click Edit View. And remember, I can go back up to one year in time. So I'll define my start time in January of 2019. and the end time will be a year later. And now when I print the report, I can see when the report was generated, and when I scroll down, I can also see the dates included in this report. As you can see, XMS Cloud is very easy to use, yet is still a very powerful management system. We always welcome your feedback and suggestions on how we can improve this system. To contact us, click on the Contact Support or Give Us Feedback button at the bottom of the page. And then click the Give Us Feedback button. This information will go directly to our product management team. For further assistance on XMS Cloud, please open a trouble ticket at support.cambiumnetworks.com. We also have a few free tools that you can use in setting up, managing, and troubleshooting your new Xeris Wi-Fi network. Wi-Fi Designer is a cloud-based Wi-Fi network designing tool. Use it to import your floor plan and correctly design your network. Wi-Fi Inspector is another free tool that provides real-time monitoring of your Wi-Fi network status and helps to ensure that you are getting the highest performance available from your Wi-Fi network. And Zircon is a Xeris exclusive tool that gives you console access into all of your Xeris access points without the use of a console cable. Well, this concludes this video on getting started with XMS Cloud. Thank you for your time and have a great day.